Hey y'all. So, uh, I saw these weird things in uh, the store uh, called Del Monte Veggie Full Pocket Pies. And I thought, I was actually shopping hungry, which is not a good idea. But uh, I thought, well, heck, I might as well try them. They were like half off. I guess because they're kind of a new product. I don't know. Uh, seems like they're just something that they're trying out to see if there's a market for it. Because while they're not vegan, they are vegetarian. And they include um, <coughs> meat-free, plant-based meat alternative. Which I'm not a big eater of. I'm not, um, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. Uh, I cook that way from time to time because... Um, cutting meat out of your diet so that it's not in every meal is actually better for you in a lot of ways, especially for me. Um, I'm not prescribing it for everyone, but I'm saying it works better for me. Um, I was raised eating meat in every meal, pretty much, and that led to all kinds of issues. Um, not super serious ones, but ones where it was like, well, what if I left out the meat from this meal? What if I made this recipe without meat? And, um, you know, it, it, it's partially due to the caloric density of meat. Some of it's due to some of the fattier meat that you get, like uh, lamb and beef and uh, duck. And that stuff tends to lay me out. I tend to uh, need a while to digest it. Okay, so anyway... I saw these and I, because I was looking at the, um, I was looking at the uh, hot pockets, because I was like, what can I warm up quickly when I get home? These I waited a few days to actually try because I had one thing I wanted to eat, and then um, yesterday I, I did takeout. So anyway, um, I I looked at this and I was like, this actually sounds like an interesting product, something that's at least worth trying and for the price which um, is normally four dollars I got discounted um, they uh, they were I was like okay I'll give these a try and from personal experience I know that typically in order to feel satisfied I have to basically double a portion size of food if I'm eating vegetarian or thereabouts. I, I basically have to eat a larger portion of food, of vegetarian food, because there's no meat. And meat is very dense calorically. Uh, I've, I've done all the research on this. I've looked at um, the number of calories per gram, and that's an important measure, okay? Uh, because a gram is a measure of mass, not of weight. So the amount of mass versus the amount of calories in that mass matters. No pun intended. Um, anyway, so I was, I, I'm actually talking so much because I'm laying these cool because I just got them out of the microwave. Um, but let's talk a bit about some of the flavors and talk a bit about what Del Monte, which is a big veggie, you know, big name in uh, canned and frozen veggies, mostly canned veggies, uh, has to say for itself. Uh, so at Del Monte, we believe that nutritious plant-based food should also be delicious. Or I'm sorry, we believe that nutritious plant-based food should also be delicious. Way to go there, me. Uh, that's why we strive to make all veggies crave-worthy. Um, our veggie-full pocket pies are filled with wholesome ingredients and baked to perfection in a golden crust made with cauliflower. I didn't know that. Uh, try all delicious flavors. So they didn't have an idea of how many flavors they were going to have, I guess, when they wrote that. Because they left out the number. Instead of all the delicious flavors, or all of our delicious flavors. So anyway, uh, speaking of the flavors, uh, that brings me to my little notepad here. Uh, the four flavors that we're going to be trying today are broccoli, potato, cheddar, and I have a notation underneath each name to tell me how to identify them because 
if you look, they're practically indistinguishable, unfortunately. But I uh, bothered to make notes as I was warming them up. So broccoli potato cheddar, Philly cheese steak with meat alternative for the steak. So that'll be a tricky one. Spinach artichoke parmesan and rosemary garlic chicken with meat alternative. Now, I have no doubt that the veggie ones are going to taste great because that's just a vegetable recipe. But the meat-based ones, it's going to depend on what meat alternative they used. And, uh, anyway, so it just gets to be interesting, you know. I, it, it, it's interesting to try this stuff, to, to see this stuff and see what uh, is going on with all this, you know. Why not? Um, I'm sorry about the video format here. I'm kind of in a weird situation with this. All right, so why don't we start with the veggie ones, and then we'll start. We'll we'll move on to the uh, we'll move on to the meat-based ones. Okay, so broccoli potato cheddar um, is this one. Uh, I wrote down that it has lots of specks, lots of little brown specks compared to the um, Philly cheesesteak one, which has fewer specks. We're bringing Spexy back. Anyway, um, yes, I came up with that joke as I was writing my notes. Hmm. Okay, well, first off, the crust is not so much golden, uh, but it is nice and chewy. It has a good texture. Not really getting the cheddar. You do you do get some nice pieces of broccoli in this. And it seems like the potato is more mashed to kind of thicken it. So that's okay. That's nice. That's a really good thing. And uh, that would be, like, a really nice light treat. Um, or if you were having, like, a salad or a meat bait, you know, if you were having, like, a salad with maybe some chicken or something on top, if you're a meat eater. But if you're a vegetarian, um, you know, you'd probably want that with, like, some fruit or something. The idea is that this is kind of a, of a quick lunch thing that you can eat on the go, right? Uh, but I don't know. It, it it's kind of different uh, from what you normally expect. I actually don't get regular hot pockets. I get lean pockets because I found that the regular hot pockets um, typically tended to have pork, and they didn't agree with me. Uh, I don't eat pork, so I've never really gotten into that. But it was always kind of a question, like whether or not hot pockets and lean pockets were at all worth it. So I didn't bother really getting big into that so it was kind of a weird thing um, then seeing these and wondering what the heck was up with them right anyway better dig into this spinach artichoke parmesan That's weird. The inside looks like it's the rosemary garlic chicken. Hmm. Yeah, I think I may have had a mix-up there. That is really good. Hmm. If you couldn't tell by my big bites that I'm taking out of this thing. That was actually really good. Yeah, because I'm not seeing artichoke in there. I am seeing more rosemary and chicken and whatnot. I think this one actually might be the spinach artichoke because this has the other green specks on it. I had brown specks and green specks, so it's like 
and I had no way of marking them because they were frozen solid. Um, you know, I could have taken like a marker and put it on, but then part of it would have been covered in marker and tasted nasty, so. Okay, yeah, that is the spinach. You can clearly see spinach in there. Mmm. So that's basically just your spinach artichoke dip that you get from a restaurant or a store or that you make at home. And they just kind of shoved it in a in a crust. So mm. that has a lot of flavor. It's actually really nice. Has a good hit of garlic. And yeah, I definitely got these mixed, mixed up, and I'm sorry for that. Yeah, the garlic rosemary chicken is not as flavorful as the spinach artichoke parmesan, but that's not surprising because the um, the because artichoke is really flavorful, and so is parmesan. Mm. That's really nice. That's something that like. I think I could even convince a non-vegetarian to try. So, I don't know. Let me compare it to the uh, broccoli. Yeah, the broccoli has more flavor than the chicken, too. It's so weird, and this is one of my things. Um, I actually think that I'm a better vegetarian cook than a lot of vegetarians and vegans are, and this is after meeting several and trying their food. <laughs> because I don't cook like a vegetarian. I cook like an omnivore. So as a result, my food has more complexity and balance, I tend to find. Uh, that's not me trying to flex or brag or saying I'm the best person ever or whatever. No, it's just me saying this is my experience. I tend to find that a lot of vegetarians and vegans I, I've met don't really know how to cook. I once sat down with one person who made a vegan chili that was just ghastly. It was bean soup. He didn't do anything to thicken it. And you can easily thicken a vegan uh, chili with, oh, cornstarch. Um, you can thicken it with um, some of those powdered mashed potatoes. That easily thickens it. You can just thicken it with a little flour. Um, or you can, you, you can thicken with lots of different things. You can use arrowroot, which is a really old school way of thickening things. Or you can even use uh, pureed onions. That would actually go really well with the chili. Anyway, enough stalling. Let's try the Philly cheese steak and see if it's mediocre or flavorful. It's supposed to have red peppers and I think mushrooms. So it's supposed to be a pretty proper cheese steak aside from the lack of steak. So. They really went all out on this because you can taste it. That is really good. Oh my god. Like, you get really good flavors from the peppers and the cheese and this. Um, plant-based uh, beef is really nice. I don't know what they use in it, but that has a nice flavor. Uh, they call the meaty taste that you get from mushrooms and um, meats like steak and whatnot, they call that umame. And that's really the secret, is uh, when you're cooking and you aren't using meat, you want to get that umame flavor, which you can get through monosodium glutamate, or you can get through 
uh, mushrooms and some other non-meat based sources and honestly that's one that's one of my great secrets for vegetarian cooking is I go for all those different flavors when I've had um, vegetarian girlfriends in the past I I cook that way for them and it tends to make them pretty happy uh, one of my last ones didn't even know how to use a microwave and I felt so bad for her I'm like do, do, do you cook? Because I was raised to cook, like, from three. Possibly even younger. Basically, as soon as you can reach the counter, you're expected to help out with the cooking a little bit. You know, to learn a little bit. Anyway, I don't know. Hmm. That is surprisingly good compared to what I got with the chicken. One of the reasons I'm glad I don't have COVID is I haven't lost my sense of taste. You know, along with the crippling agony and horrible coughing and eventual death and uh, spending weeks on a respirator and possibly spreading the disease to everyone I know and love. Um, yeah, so definitely glad I don't have COVID. very thankful for that um i'm sure we all are <laughs> i'm being a jerk aren't i all right anyway yeah the broccoli cheddar one is not really hitting it i think the potato because it's pureed although that's nice. It doesn't quite hit it out of the park. It tends to mull things down. Um, and they don't use a very sharp cheddar, which I find tends to help with flavors like that. Meanwhile, the spinach artichoke is really nice. And in fact, on the website, that's the one that they're pushing. If they're like prototypical examples. So I think that's the one that probably had the highest marks from taste testers. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm not going to eat the whole things in front of you guys. So with that, let me grab a pencil here. So the ones that I would recommend are the spinach artichoke parmesan and the philly cheese steak because those two were the most flavorful um if you were more a fan of milder flavors then rosemary garlic chicken and broccoli potato cheddar would probably be um more your style but if you're also someone who doesn't want to have the experience of eating meat or if you're then you'll want to go with the ones that don't have the fake meat and if you're someone who is maybe cutting over or trying to mix up your diet a little bit then the philly cheesesteak would definitely be the top recommendation and the rosemary garlic chicken needs a little bit of work like that one i think could actually use mushrooms personal opinion um the broccoli potato cheddar could probably use some onion it just needs some savory in there because uh, you just don't have enough flavors and um uh you know but they worked on this and those were the top recipes that they came up with out of their test kitchen for their panel of taste testers and whatnot so you know have you guys tried this what do you think uh, leave a constructive and respectful comment below, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. If you want to, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Facebook. On Twitter, I'm Plata Reviews, and on Facebook, I'm just Plata. And uh, you can also support me on Ko-fi, Cash App, um, oh goodness, uh, Venmo, and um, 
also, of course, on Patreon. And Patreon patrons get to actually decide what I cover if they are so inclined. They can actually request me doing something. So, you know, you don't have to just put up with whatever I want to put out. Uh, all right, so with that said, thank you so much for clicking over. I'm looking over this way because <laughs> that's where I have my other screen so I can, um, so I'm not tempted to look down all the time. Instead, I'm looking over there. Anyway, uh, all right, so with all that said, thanks for clicking over. Please uh, upvote this, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye bye.